Bueno, buenas tardes, esto es Claxo 2018. El Grupo de Derechos en Tensión acaba de terminar un panel donde se presentó y discutió un número especial de la revista Social Politics, cuyos artículos versaron sobre los gobiernos de izquierda y los avances en los derechos de las mujeres en este periodo que parecería que se está cerrando. Para conocer más sobre los gobiernos de izquierda y los avances en derechos de mujeres y la representación política de las mujeres, tenemos el enorme gusto hoy de poder conversar con la profesora Kendall Funk, Assistant Professor de Arizona State University, a quien eh, tenemos aquí presente y va a compartir con nosotros los resultados de su agenda de investigación. Good afternoon, Kendall. Hi, Ana Laura. It's very nice having you here in Claxo. Uh, could you please tell us uh, why have you decided to focus your research on Latin America? Um, sure. So a lot of it stems from uh, where I grew up. I was born in uh, Texas in the United States, very close to Mexico, and I grew up around a lot of immigrants and a lot of people coming from Mexico and Central America. Um, so from, from a very young age, I had an interest in Latin America, and in particular, why people were immigrating from Latin America to the U.S. So that stemmed my interest in Latin America, so I began to study it throughout um, grade school. Then whenever I started my, my Ph.D., in uh, political science. I was very interested uh, then in gender in Latin America because I found it to be such an interesting place, especially uh, with the election of women and gender quotas, which was very new to me being from the U.S. where we don't have, um, we've never had a woman president, for example, we don't have gender quotas. So it was a very unique, interesting place for me to study. Uh, that's what drove my interest in Latin America. Kendall, can you tell us about your research, for example, what are your main, what, your area of research? I know it's gender and political representation, but do you focus on any special country? And what can you tell us about the advances women have made uh, into electoral positions and other kind of bureaucratic and high level positions? Yes, yes I can. Uh, so you're right, my research is mostly about women's representation in political offices. In particular, I study both the causes and the consequences of women's representation. So on the causes side, I study things uh, like the factors that help women get elected into political office, like gender quotas, um, like policies and electoral systems that are more favorable towards women. And on the consequences side, I study uh, questions such as whether women legislators or women elected officials do things differently than men elected officials. Uh, for example, whether women elected officials are more likely to represent the interests of women. And I focus a lot of my research on Brazilian municipalities um, and bu Brazilian uh, bureaucracies at the local level as well. So for example, in my research, I find that women elected officials uh, are more likely at the local level to have uh, women, to have less gender inequality in their municipal executive bureaucracies compared to men at the local level, men mayors, for example. Uh, so some initial evidence that women do do things differently once they're in elected offices compared to how men do things. Could it be true to say that women do make a difference once selected into politics? Yes, I think there's a substantial body of research that's, that shows with strong evidence that women do things differently than men elected officials. They have different impacts on um, public policies, on women's representation. I have another piece of research also on Brazilian local governments that shows that women mayors allocate their budgets differently than men mayors. So even looking at things um, as broad as government spending, we see some gender differences that women elected officials are acting in ways that uh, represent the interests of women better than their men counterparts oftentimes. Now we are experiencing a shift in governments. In the last decade we saw left-wing governments but now many right-wing governments are being elected. Do you think party ideology is going to make a difference now that these right-wing governments are getting into the executive power? 
So historically, what we've seen is that leftist governments have been better for re women's representation compared to right-leaning governments. However, now that there's been uh, a lot of women in office, in elected offices, uh, time will tell whether this has then uh, become a norm and now that right governments are going to keep up with this norm of women's representation or whether we'll see decreases like we've seen uh, in the past with right governments. So there's a question uh, that I think that's still to be answered about whether right-leaning governments will be as favorable for women's representation as left-leaning governments moving forward or whether we'll continue to see these disparities between right-leaning and left-leaning governments. For the next years to come, what do you think are going to be the main challenges that women in politics are going to face? Wow. So women, I think, still face a lot of challenges that they faced throughout history. Um, chief among them, uh, countering violence against women, getting equal pay as men, uh, gender equality and representation, and in other aspects of social life. So I think moving forward into the future that women will still have these issues uh, to to fight for their rights and to overcome uh, moving forward and in particular the issues that that feminists have been fighting for uh, over over decades now our final question um, what should be the lines of research uh, for the years to come always in the field of women and politics in the field of women in politics, uh, I, I think we should study everything. Uh, but in particular, uh, like you said, Ana Laura, with this uh, resurgence of right-leaning governments, to study the roles of women in more conservative parties, to study whether these women are more similar to their conservative male counterparts or whether they're uh, more similar to women from liberal parties and in the ways that they differ. So um, along that line, also the diversity among women, right? All of the different identities that women hold uh, across race and ethnicity, social class, gender identity, sexuality, right? Uh, the group of women as a whole is very large. So studying the diversity of women um, and how these differences manifest in terms of policy preferences and um, in inequalities and disparities. Thank you very much, Kendall. Thank you.